Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. Welcome to episode four of the Arm Your Mind for Liberty podcast and video blog. I'm George Donnelly, your host. Today, I'm talking about infighting in the liberty community. Uh, I have here an article from, um, I believe it's called Spread Speak Liberty Now, speaklibertynow.com called Infighting is Pointless. And um, I, I always, I always kind of laugh when people complain about infighting because uh, it seems like the complaining about the info- infighting is actually part of the infighting. And uh, I just reject this whole idea of infighting. Um, I think this proceeds, the, the in part, proceeds from this idea that there is an inside the liberty community and we must be, we mustn't fight inside the liberty community. And a fight strikes me as kind of a, a red herring, an extreme, a straw man. It's really a straw man because um, I think it would be more better aptly said discussion. And, um, you know, we need discussion. We need to talk more. Uh, we need more action, but we also need more talking inside the liberty community. There are too many people who, for whatever reason, reached libertarianism and then turned off. They're not open to new ideas anymore. Uh, You know, they've reached the end of their road. Their train has reached the final station. Well, let me tell you, the search for truth uh, has no end point. There is no terminal station uh, on this train line. And we have to always keep our minds open and question our assumptions and our premises. So, um, and I've been wanting to comment on this because there's certain people who complain about infighting and drama and just shut up and you know all this stuff. So I don't want to I don't want to hate on this site in the least. Um, I'm sure that they have some very nice stuff here. Um, but wh- there are a few things here that uh, I wanted to take note of. Um, it says lacking real life examples of pure anarchy. Almost all extant territorial settlements settlements are examples of government. Basically saying, you know, we can't really give good examples of anarchy, pure anarchy. Of course, this pure anarchy, when everybody, whenever somebody puts the word pure or true or real in front of something, it's just alarm bells going off for me because um, it's, it's just not helpful. It's, it's, like, they're, it's, it's like, a, like a sign that they're going to the extreme, that they're, they're straw manning or um, just re- ruling out all the reason, other reasonable uh, possibilities. It's almost like a false dichotomy kind of a thing. Um, there are plenty of examples of, of anarchism, of decentralized uh, power, of people power all around us. And I'll give you one example is the um, credit reporting system. Uh, when um, you know people get their credit reports, um, when you take out credit and they check that to see whether you're credit worthy or not or to get a mortgage, uh, the government didn't create that. Uh, that the credit reporting system is an independent thing that grew up. Uh, basically, it's a reputation system, whether you pay your debts or not, uh, whether you, you know, there are, it's valid to disagree on whether people should be paying uh, debts in Federal Reserve notes or whether debt is um, uh, something that makes sense, you know, whether we should have it or not, or whether it's usury or oh, all that stuff. But the fact is it exists, and it's an example of decentralized power. Um, so I, I don't know what this pure anarchy thing is, but I know that there are examples of it all of all around us. Uh, there are also some uh, some work about how um, we had decentralized power um, in the, the the so-called Wild West stage. But anyway, I mean, he the the author seems to be saying that because there is no pure anarchist country, you know, anarchist country. I mean, he didn't use those words, but that's the concept at work here. Uh, of course, an anarchist country is a contradiction in terms, but because that doesn't exist, then you know we can't really say whether it works or not. But Hong Kong does work, according to this author, and it's an example of minarchism. Um, and it says ultimately we simply have to trust what praxeology concludes, even with a minimal government. If it doesn't satisfy preferences, a market will open to fill that demand. And at the end of the day, you can't escape anarchy. Even if I were completely wrong and minarchists were just misguided statists, 
they will run into the issue of government not being an efficient use of capital. Therefore, it doesn't matter. And infighting is a holy is wholly a waste of time. Um, so let's talk about this minarchists, you know, falling into anarchism kind of a thing. I wrote an article uh, four years ago now called Minarchists, You're Really Anarchists. Um, and basically, uh, whenever I take Stefan Molyneux's against me argument to minarchists, um, they fold. You guys inevitably fold. And basically, the against me argument is that uh, you know, okay, you're in favor of maybe taxes or you're in favor of uh, ensuring that I pay for government-provided uh, services, however uh, maximal or minimal that those that government would be. Uh, what if I don't want to participate in that? What if I don't want to pay that? I don't want to recognize that authority, etc. Are you willing? Are you going to come after me? Are you going to endorse any attempts to come after me and force me to comply? And inevitably... No, they're not willing. And so effectively, this means that, um, you know, if we get to a minarchist situation, it, as long as there is the will uh, and there exist anarchists and they have the will to do it, uh, that it's not going to last very long, that, that minarchist thing. Because if I'm around, I'm going to immediately opt out. I'm immediately going to start, um, you know, a private defense agency or a dispute resolution organization or something that competes with the government. And um, as soon as the government is no, long, no longer has exclusive authority in a given geographical area, and that's Ayn Rand's definition of government, it's not going to be government anymore. It's just going to be a, uh, another competing organization. Um, so basically, uh, you know, minarchists, you know, there, there's no middle space between statism and anarchism. Either you are for uh, using violence to force people to do what the majority say, whether that's pay taxes or not use, uh, not grow uh, marijuana or whatever. Or you're going to fold and you're going to let people do whatever they like as long as they don't hurt other people. Uh, you know, you can't say, well, I'm a minarchist and so I want just a tiny little, little, little state. Because as soon as you do that, I'm going to be like, well, I'm going to compete with your state. And uh, unless you come after me and put me in your prison, uh, then you are no longer, um, your state no longer has exclusive control over a given geographical area, and it's no longer government. It's just another competing organization. Because government, um, as we know it today, does not exist without using force to uh, ensure compliance. If it's voluntary, then it's not really the same beast. You can call a government if you like. You can call a dispute resolution organization a form of government. You can call um, a um, private defense agency a form of government if you'd like, but it's not really the same thing. Yeah, um, it, There's a qualitative difference there. There's a significant difference. So your precious minarchism, poof, evaporates. And um, so it, it may, you know, when people, you know, the, this claim that the infighting is pointless, I disagree because ideas are at the basis of everything we do. And, the, you know, for those of you who are uh, objectivists or like Ayn Rand, and Ayn Rand was ostensibly a minarchist, um, this is something that she said. Ideas are, are at the bottom of what do we do, and we need to get our ideas straight. Uh, you know, um, just talking, talking about things, talking out ideas, is not a form of, um, you know, self-gratification necessarily. It's quite important because we need... Um, that's one way where we figure out our ideas and we get them straight in our own heads. And our ideas form the basis of the, our actions, which are critically important. I think everyone agrees there. So, for example, if you accept that um, government can be legitimate, then it's a very small step for you to make to thinking that this government or some aspects of it are legitimate. You might think the police force is legitimate. You might think that the military is legitimate. You might think that launching uh, foreign wars of uh, that the propaganda machine says are defensive are legitimate. You might think the whole Afghanistan thing is legitimate. And you might think then that paying taxes is legitimate and forcing people to pay them is legitimate. You might even go along with that. And you might even think that um, you know paying benefits to uh, retired soldiers is some kind of contract. And that that's legitimate. And I have to break, I break it to you. None of that is legitimate. 
And when you fall onto that slippery slope of saying, well, this, this part of the government is legitimate, and this part of the government is legitimate, well, then all we have to do is match you up with the, the uh, other people who think, well, their little piece of the government is legitimate, and his little piece of the government is legitimate, and my little piece of the government is legitimate. Of course, I'm not. I'm an anarchist. Um, but it, you know, once you match all that up, well, you have the thing we have today, which is government by committee. You know, Everybody got their little piece in. Millions of people have their little piece in, and we have the disaster that we have today and the excuse-making that justifies uh, killing kids with drones uh, overseas and that inevitably weakens um, the American people and um, you know, brings terrorists to our shores in an attempt to get us to stop killing their kids over in Pakistan and, uh, and get our troops out of Saudi Arabia. and Not ours. They're not mine. Not my troops. Uh, yours. They're your troops. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Um, that's what that gets us. So, um, infighting good. Yeah? As long as it focuses on the issues and doesn't devolve into ad hominem. We need to talk things out. So stop telling people to stop talk things out. We need to talk them out. Uh, so if you have any uh, questions or comments about this episode, the phone number is here. Give me a call, leave a message, or leave a comment if you're on YouTube under here or uh, if you're on my website. Uh, or, um, you know, you can always hit me up on Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, personal email, whatever. Uh, thanks for listening. Have a great day. Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. <laughs>